If we were given only a pencil and some paper and asked to find all the prime numbers less than 1,000, how could we do it? We could look at each number individually, checking to see if it has exactly two factors, namely one in itself, but that process would be extremely time-consuming and require a great deal of seemingly unnecessary effort. We'd surely want a more efficient and elegant approach. Enter the sieve of Eratosthenes. It's like a sieve used in a kitchen, but instead of separating coarse particles from fine particles, it filters prime numbers from natural numbers. This clever and quick method for finding primes up to some given number is named after Eratosthenes of Cyrene, a friend of Archimedes famously known for calculating the circumference of the Earth. Let's take a look at how the sieve of Eratosthenes works. Suppose we wanted to find all the prime numbers less than or equal to 100. We start by listing all the natural numbers from 1 through 100. From here, our goal is to remove all the non-prime numbers from the list so that only primes remain. Let's start with the number 1. Since 1 is not considered a prime number, we remove it from the list and move on to 2. 2 is a prime number, our first prime. Now that we've found a prime, we consider all the following multiples of this prime. That is, all the multiples of 2 that are greater than 2. Since these greater values have a factor of 2, they are not prime, and therefore can be removed from our list. The next number in the list is 3. Since 3 was not removed in the previous step, it does not have a factor of 2. So, we can conclude that its only factors are 1 and itself, meaning it's a prime number. We now remove all the higher multiples of 3, since having a factor of 3 means that these numbers cannot be prime. Notice that some of these numbers have already been removed from the list because they're also multiples of 2. After 3 comes 4, which we got rid of along with its multiples when we removed multiples of 2. So we move on to 5. Since 5 has survived up to this point, we know that it does not have any of the numbers before it other than 1 as factors, and must therefore be a prime number. As usual, we now remove all the other multiples of 5 from the list, some of which were already removed in earlier steps. From here, we just keep repeating this process up the list, identifying the next remaining number as a prime and removing all the other multiples of that prime until finally only prime numbers remain in the list. Perhaps you're thinking, how long will it take? When can we stop the process and be sure that we've identified all the primes up to 100? Do we actually need to work our way all the way up to 100? We don't. In fact, we don't even need to get to the halfway point of 50. In this case, we can stop after 10, and we'll see why shortly. Looking at our current list, the only number left to deal with then is the prime number 7. Once we remove all the multiples of 7, other than 7 itself, we're left with only the primes. Mission accomplished. But why do we not need to be concerned about repeating the process for values greater than 10? Well, notice that by the time we work our way up to 10, we're guaranteed to have already removed several multiples of 10 from our list. In particular, all the products of 10 and values less than 10. For example, 30 would have been knocked off the list when removing multiples of 3, since 3 times 10 is 30. Keep in mind that 30 would have already been gone by that point, since it's a multiple of 2. Similarly, if 80 wasn't already removed as a multiple of 2, it would surely be kicked off the list when we removed multiples of 8. Which, by the way, would never be its own step since 8 and all its multiples leave the list early as multiples of 2. So, by the time we reach 10, if there are any multiples of 10 still on the list, other than perhaps 10 itself, they would have to be products of 10 and values greater than or equal to 10. The least of such products, however, is 100, which is the highest value in our list and thus the greatest number of interest to us. If we hadn't already removed this value earlier in the process, we'd remove it now. Similarly, we don't need to further concern ourselves with multiples of 11, 12, 13, and so on, since all of those up to 100 would have already been removed from the list in previous steps. Generalizing this idea, if we wish to find all the prime numbers less than or equal to n, we can stop the filtering algorithm after we reach the greatest integer less than or equal to the square root of n. For example, if we were looking for all the primes less than or equal to 2000, we could stop the algorithm after removing all the multiples of 44, since the square root of 2000 is approximately 44.7.
An attractive feature of the sieve of Eratosthenes is that it can easily be coded as a computer program, thereby allowing us to find all the primes up to a given number extremely quickly. Check out the description of this video for a link to a Python program that does just that.